House Speaker Mike Johnson is fighting to keep his job, the job he's had for less than six months. At least two House Republicans are threatening to oust him over his plans to handle Ukraine aid, aid to Israel. This was his message just a short while ago. I am not resigning, and it is, um, it is, in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion when we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It has not helped the House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here. CNN's Manu Raju is on Capitol Hill. You've been talking to lawmakers all morning. Obviously, Manu, this is about, in the short term, uh, the politics for Mike Johnson. But we shouldn't lose sight, of course, of the fact that Ukraine and Ukraine's allies, both here and abroad, have been begging Mike Johnson to do something quickly so that they don't lose to Russia. Yeah, this has been going on for months and months and months. And just about two months ago is when the Senate passed its own foreign aid package that Mike Johnson sidelined as he tried to come up with his own strategies. He tried to win over Republicans. And just yesterday, he announced that strategy, saying that he's going to move forward on separate bills for Ukraine, for Israel, for Taiwan, and another bill that includes other policy measures, including a ban, uh, could, something that could eventually lead to a ban on TikTok. But here's the catch. It is expected that the House will use a parliamentary maneuver to essentially put all those bills in together in one package and send that over to the Senate. And that is what's causing a lot of angst within the GOP ranks. A lot of Republicans, particularly on the hard right, have said there should not be another dime for Ukraine. They do not want to tie this to aid to Israel. Democrats, the White House, want it all tied together because of what they say is an essential, it's actually an emergency for Ukraine. They say that this money is needed right now. Now, this all comes, of course, as the threat to, vac to push out Mike Johnson is growing. In fact, Thomas Massey, the, who is a Kentucky Republican, announced behind closed doors that he would support this effort by Marjorie Taylor Greene to push out Mike Johnson from the speakership. And he called on Johnson directly to resign. And I asked him about that interaction in that tense exchange behind closed doors. So you want him to resign? You want him to resign? What yes. Yeah, I asked him to resign. That's what he said. He said he would not. And then I said, well, you're the one who's going to put us into this. Because the motion is going to get called. I'm not a big fan of this, you know. Well, I like the individual votes. I'm not a big fan of putting them all back together. What about the motion to vacate? Would no, you? We shouldn't. Be, we don't need that. No way. No way. We don't, we don't want that. We, we, can't, we shouldn't go through that again. So you're seeing a difference of an opinion there from two conservatives on the right flank of the Republican conference. Of course, Jim Jordan's being one who's influential within a lot of a lot of Republicans. But it's interesting to hear Jordan there. While he opposes this effort to push out Mike Johnson, he also is opposed to what the speaker is trying to do here. You're seeing a lot of divisions among Republicans at this critical time because there's a question here, Dana. Can, how long can Johnson survive? And does Mike Johnson even have the votes to get this measure out of the House by the end of the week, which is his goal. So just so many things that are riding on these key decisions at this moment, but a very precarious time for the Speaker. Almost, almost Speaker Jim Jordan there uh, saying, uh, no, we should not do this again. The dynamic among Democrats, particularly those who are the most vulnerable, um, there are several of them who are stepping up saying, you know what, they would potentially vote to help Mike Johnson because it would help them in their swing districts. What's the dynamic there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is an interesting dynamic, much different than what we saw with Kevin McCarthy when all Repu Democrats voted with eight Republicans to oust Kevin McCarthy. This time is different. Several of them, including Tom Swasey of New York, has told me that he will not vote to oust Mike Johnson. Jared Moskowitz said he would not support Marjorie Taylor Greene's efforts to oust him because he, does, he disagrees with Marjorie Taylor Greene on pretty much everything. Whether another member would come forward and push out Mike Johnson, then he said he would evaluate it on that regard. And then there are others who say that if he does move forward on aid to Ukraine, that will be enough for them to save Mike Johnson's speakership, Abigail Spamberger being one of them. So a different dynamic here, Dana. But will the, how will the numbers add up? Will there be enough Democrats to save him? What will the Democratic leaders do on that key vote? Those are all key questions that are coming in the days ahead. Dana. Okay. I'm glad you got those comfortable shoes on every single day, Manu. Thank you so much for that great <laughs> reporting. Uh, panel is back here. Thanks. Uh, your publication has a very simple headline. I'll, I'll put it up. And I didn't write it. And you didn't write it, but it's still simple and very apt. We are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I did write that one. <laughs> um, look, we're, 
this is going to be incredibly complicated. I think Manu just did a great job breaking it down. And we're really just, this is basic math at this point on whether or not he's going to survive. For every Republican that, mm -hmm. you know, Johnson loses, he's got to find a Democrat that's willing to come on the side. And that's why, you know, the shoe leather or hopefully comfortable shoes that Manu is wearing are going to be so important because we're just going to be running around and, trying to figure this out. And can we just please take a step back and say, this is not like the most you know, egregious political move that Mike Johnson could make in the grand scheme of things. What he's trying to do is pro provide money for a democracy in Europe under threat, quite literally under siege. And this is what he is getting. It's called governing. It's called legislating. It's called carrying out the functions of your office, which uh, to some in his conference uh, is uh, not a positive. But I think one difference here is from the McCarthy thing is just the time in the season we're in. We are during a presidential campaign mm -hmm. season. Uh, there's very uh, little tolerance or less tolerance to sort of uh, motion uh, to vacate and throw the speaker out again. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, right. but when the former president uh, had Speaker Johnson at his side just a few days ago, that was the indication of, mm -hmm. guys, leave him alone, let him do his work. We'll see if they follow through. Closer to the presidential election, closer to the day that every House member is on the ballot. Yeah, no, I, I think that'll uh, make some difference. I mean, it is uh, remarkable that the reason that these Republicans are so up in arms about uh, Ukraine funding is because of President Trump and his uh, approach to Putin, his approach and feelings about Russia. So, you know, here we are seeing them do his bidding again, you know, treating him like he's a president uh, in exile in so many ways. And Mike Johnson in a place that I thought you know, listen, six months ago, it was imagined that he would be here uh, with his speakership on the line, and likely it'll happen again and again.